everyone, welcome back to Susan Sunday Spotlight. This is week number 10. I am so excited to have been here for you every single week with a new game for 10 weeks in a row. I still have 42 more to go, so make sure you are subscribed and click that bell so you're notified every single week of the new game. If you're loving any of these videos, make sure you give them a thumbs up to let me know which ones you like. And as always, leave a comment below telling me if you've used it in your classroom or if there are any other games you're looking for. The game I have for you this Sunday is called Snap. It is a fast-paced card game um, that's really simple to play and is great for number sense. All you actually need for this game is a deck of cards right here. So I'm first going to show you how to play with the deck of cards, just the traditional way. And then at the end of the video, I'll share some other skills and strategies that you can use to play this game too. So let's learn how to play. Okay, the game Snap can be played with anywhere between two and four players. I recommend no more than four, even though I think technically you can because it gets a little crazy. So depending on how many players you have, you'll want to go ahead and make equal piles for each player. So I'm going to pretend we have two players playing here, player one and player two. What they're going to do is they're going to take turns flipping over the top card on their pile to make a new pile. Let me put this down a little bit for you so you can see a little better. So nine. Three. Now students don't have to say the number out loud if you don't want them to, that is fine. But what they're doing is every time they flip over that card, they're looking to see if their top card matches any other player's top card. And if it does, they're going to go ahead and yell snap. So four. Whichever player sees that that's a match first is going to yell snap. And whoever does, let's pretend it's player number one, will get to take both of these piles that have already been flipped and they will add it to the bottom of their pile. Students will continue playing like this until one of the players has all the cards. It's the goal of the game is to get all the cards. Now, sometimes, especially if you're playing with more than two students, two students might yell snap at the same exact time. So these two students will actually take their piles, combine them, and it becomes the pot. So then students will keep playing like they were before, but now every time they flip a card onto their pile, they're seeing if it not only matches the other players in their card, but they're seeing if it matches the pot. And just like before, if it matches another player, they take that pile. If it matches the pot, they actually get to take all of those. So let's pretend this one matched. They'll take all of the cards and add it to the bottom of their pile again. This person's card still stays up because they haven't found a match. And this person would go again, nine, 10, 10. Whoever yells snap, takes it and adds it to the bottom. Again, this game just continues until there are no cards left if you are holding no cards in your pile, that means you are out, and the student who ends up with all the cards in the end is the winner. Once students know how to play the game, you can go ahead and change up that deck of cards that you're playing with, and that will help them practice all different types of skills, and you can still play with the same rules. So I have five different ways that I like to play Snap in the classroom. I will share them with you right now. I've actually created each of these, so I will link those below to my TPT store, but if you have index cards, you can make any of these on your own. Um, my only advice for if you're making them yourself is make sure you have at least 40 cards if you're playing with two people. And then as you're going ahead and you're playing the game, make sure there's more than one match for each item. Um, because it's so fast paced and because there'll be more people playing um, and you're constantly flipping over the cards, you need to have more matches so students are more able to yell snap when they see a match. So here are some ways I like to play. The first one, I didn't actually make cards for you, but it's really simple, is with sight words. So I would just make a bunch of sight words that you're practicing and a bunch of matches, a bunch of duplicates. And as students play this game, I would actually have them read the card every time they flip it over as they're looking to see if anybody else's matches. Another identification way is with letters. I like to do this with my kindergarten students, and I actually like to use uppercase and lowercase letters in this case. And so this one, when students are playing it, again, I'd have them flip the card, say the letter, but they would also have to look and see because if any of their matches on top, or if any of their cards rather, match either a lowercase, an uppercase, or they can match together. So for this one, it's actually really fast paced because there should be a lot of matches in there for them. Just like with letter ID, you can also do this with number ID, just like we did with the deck of cards, but in this case, I would throw in some numerals and some 10 frame cards. This way, as students are flipping those numbers, they're looking all different ways to try to identify those numbers to see if they can have a match and yell snap. 
getting a little trickier, one way I like to play this and also practice phonemic awareness is with rhyming words. So I will go ahead and write out a bunch of rhyming words. I usually do this with um, CVC words to make them easy to decode because again it's a fast moving game so you don't want it to be too difficult. And I will go ahead and have the words and students will have to say the word, flip it, cat, bat, and they'll have to check and see if anybody else has it. I also like this one because instead of just looking to see if that ending matches, they're actually listening for the rhyming word, so they're practicing that as well. And lastly, a little more difficult that you could probably do with your first grade students or maybe your second grade students would be to use place value. And for this one, I like to go ahead and actually do place value blocks and they have to match it with their two digit number. So again, I would not teach this one until after my students have already gone through place value and are pretty good at identifying the base 10 blocks and counting up that two digit number quickly. So that is how you play Snap. It's another easy game that you can use in your classroom right away and students tend to love it. I hope you've had fun. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up if you haven't already and I will see you next week. Bye. There are kids literally screaming outside. And go ahead and change up that deck, and then you have them. That deck?